Hello everyone, how's your NCLEX review going? Now in this review, I will briefly go over diabetes insipidus and go over a few of the contents that you will most likely encounter in your NCLEX exam instead of just going over information that are somewhat unnecessary, okay? Now diabetes insipidus, it occurs when the body can't regulate how it handles the internal fluids in the body and the condition is usually caused by a hormonal abnormality and just to let you know, uh, this isn't related at all to uh, diabetes mellitus, okay? Now, diabetes insipidus or DI usually is characterized by large amounts of uh, diluted urine and an increased thirst, so mainly the symptoms with our patient would be polyuria and polydipsia, okay? Now, there are, there are four types of diabetes insipidus. Each of these type has its own set of causes. It's not really important to know each type, but we'll just go over it really quick. Uh, there's a central diabetes insipidus or central DI. It's usually uh, due to not having enough of the, the hormone, hormone vasopressin, which as we all know is an antidiuretic diuretic hormone. And this can also be due to uh, damage in the hypothalamus or the pituitary gland, which uh, as we all know, the pituitary gland is the one that uh, helps ex excrete uh, ADH, okay? Or secrete ADH, I should say. Now, the next one is, is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, which occurs in the kidneys and then in the nephrons, when the kidneys are also not responding properly to the antidiuretic hormone vasopressin. Next one is dipsogenic DI, or dipsogenic diabetes insipidus. And again, it's another uh, abnormality with the hypothalamus. And then lastly is gestational diabetes, which is happens only during pregnancy. Now, diagnosis is often based on urine tests, blood tests, and what we call a fluid deprivation test, okay? Now, treatment for diabetes insipidus depends on the type, but majority of the patient should be thought to drink sufficient fluids to prevent dehydration, okay? And in central and gestational diabetes uh, insipidus, it is treated with desmopressin. On the other hand, the nephrogenic diabetes insipidus can be treated by addressing the underlying cause uh, in the use of a, a thiazide, aspirin, or ibuprofen, okay? Now, there are a few things that you have to know for the NCLEX in relation to diabetes insipidus, and these are the important contents that I mentioned before. Now, radiation for a brain tumor can place a patient at risk for diabetes insipidus because there is a high possibility of damaging the pituitary gland, which is obviously responsible for uh, ADH secretion. So things we need to watch out for when a patient with a brain tumor is getting the radiation is being at risk for diabetes insipidus, okay? Another one would be like symptoms in, in common with diabetes insipidus and diabetes mellitus includes uh, polyuria and polydipsia. So you have to watch out for that. That can be a tricky question, okay? Also, since the patient with diabetes insipidus is dehydrated and is losing water, therefore there there would be a high serum osmolality. Okay, so the serum osmolality would be high, but they would have a low urine specific gravity because the patient is excreting a lot of water out of the body. So there's a high serum osmolality and a low urine specific gravity. Okay, and lastly, the client would be at risk for fluid volume deficit and that's an obvious since the patient is excreting that much water there would be a risk for fluid volume deficit now this is it for now guys this is just a quick overview but you know like i mentioned before we want to go over the most important contents that you might encounter in your NCLEX exam again thank you so much guys i really appreciate your time good luck on your exam thank you and god bless thank you bye bye